Hey everybody, my name is Kira Brown. I am an urban fantasy author and I would like to talk to you about newsletters. Now, in this entire series where I'm talking about marketing and ways to get the word out about you, I've given newsletter its own video because it's honestly a very powerful tool and it's an optional tool. Some people want to do newsletters, some don't. It kind of depends on you, but I would actually like to, you know, present the argument about why you should have one. Now, earlier in the year when I was told that I needed to have a newsletter, I, I was like, what? And the reason I was skeptical about newsletters is just because of my own personal experience many times when I signed up for a newsletter in the past it kind of felt like you know agenda you know pushing and I wasn't really interested in that and at the beginning of the year I, I was only signed up for two newsletters I was only signed up for Jenna Morassi's newsletter and Derek Murphy and I was signed up for those two for very different reasons and another reason I don't I wasn't really big on the whole newsletter thing is because I was already having to juggle a couple different email accounts I had to track one for work I had to track my personal one and then of course I have to track the one that has all my author stuff but rather than just go and say I'm not going to do that I don't think it's beneficial I decided to actually take a step back and do a lot of research in regards to newsletters and see if it was worth the effort and if it was how I could you know make the most out of it. What I came to find out is that newsletters are a very amazing tool that you can use for marketing and you know staying connected with your readers but you have to do it right. One of the things I didn't actually realize when I started doing this research about newsletters is that people who sign up for your newsletters are, are actively interested in you and what you are doing. And when you think about that, that's a really big deal, especially if they're willing to like give you their email so that way you can talk directly to them. And talking directly to them is exactly what you want to do. But on the flip side, you have to actually make it worth it for them to be invested in you. What, what are you giving in return for them to allow you into their email? Now, that's gonna be a question you're going to ask yourself a lot on various platforms. What is it that you're giving in order to kind of spark interest from people to be interested in you? You'll struggle a little bit in the beginning, but once you get your feet on the ground, you'll be fine. Now, I would like to transition into the things that you can do to make your newsletter worth the read, along with some things to keep in mind when you're actually you know, crafting the newsletter. Now, I would like to go ahead and dive straight into to the things that you should not do with your newsletter, not because these are the things that cause me to unsubscribe from other newsletters, but because these are just statistically proven things that often deter people from being subscribed to your letter. So the very first thing that you should make sure that you never do is do not only post your newsletter when you want people to buy something. You need to have a regular posting schedule that's out there and you always need to make sure that there's meaningful content. If you're only sending out your newsletter when you want people to buy something, it's gonna come out like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. If I'm already subscribed to your newsletter, I'm more than likely gonna go ahead and buy your stuff. When I'm on your newsletter, it's because I'm looking to get content that I can't get anywhere else. Next, do not assume that because you do not want it in a newsletter that your audience will not want it in the newsletter. You are unfortunately not your target audience and some of the things that you may not like maybe things that your reader will actually like. Knowing your target audience and the things that your audience is interested in is probably something that you should have already researched, but if you have not, please take the time to do that and see how you can work that into your newsletter. The very last thing, and probably one of the more important things that you should not do with your newsletter is do not post the content that you have in your newsletter ahead of time on social media. The whole reason that people are signed up for your newsletter is to get news before anybody else does. And if they see that you're posting all this information before it comes onto the newsletter, they're gonna unsubscribe because obviously they don't need to follow your newsletter to get this information. You gotta keep in mind that that your newsletter is the special cool kid club so you got to give them the special cool kid treatment now let's go ahead and talk about the things that you can do with your newsletter and probably should do all right so first things first in your newsletter you need to make sure that your voice is consistent and what i'm talking about is if you already have a blog a podcast or a youtube channel you need to make sure that the voice that you use in those other mediums is the same in the newsletter people who are invested in you are likely following you on various other platforms so they kind of know what you already sound like and if your newsletter comes off differently it's going to be jarring the next thing is a, is a topic of debate and i would actually be interested to hear what you guys have to say on this but my my general thought is that if you have a newsletter that comes out once a month is that you should have a newsletter that has some substance to it i often get really disgruntled when i waited a whole month to hear a newsletter and all i get is a picture and a paragraph and sometimes that paragraph is a really big announcement and that's really cool but i waited a whole month like can i get a little something extra please now on the flip side of that you don't want to have like freaking essays in your newsletter you usually what i do in my newsletter is that i have like categories and i have like very short like to the point 
things that have to do with those categories and then that way people if they don't want to read that section they can move on to the next section but I try to keep all the sections engaging because I want them to read it now before you actually get to writing the content of your newsletter you need to figure out what the purpose of your newsletter is are you doing a call to action are you raising awareness are you doing an update and when you figure out what the point of the newsletter for that month is going to be you can kind of like craft everything else around it for example in the newsletter that I'm having coming out um, on the 30th of this month is I'm doing a lot of big announcements because things are changing and I'm trying to share all those changes now that means that that particular newsletter is going to have a lot of information that I have to present so I'm looking at trying to find the best way to write this information share it and make it as concise and to the point as possible now trying to make the content for your newsletter is going to be kind of like I don't want to say it's hard but you're going to be kind of like what do I talk about like what do people want to know from me people are obviously going to want to know about your book right your, the status on your book what you're up to with it how far are you they're also going to want to know a little bit about you but they're it's going to be when you're talking about yourself do it in a professional manner we don't need the the once a year family update um, you know, if you're attending an event or you're a part of a project, you know, feel free to share those, but we don't want to hear about Timmy's recital. Now you are going to play around with this a little bit because obviously the demographic of people that I talk to may not be the same that you talk to. Uh, when I came out with my newsletter, a bunch of people did, you know, give me some positive feedback on it. And I did reach out to those people who contacted me. I was like, Hey, did you like what I had to say in the newsletter? And what are things that you would like me to add more to? And you know, they got back to me they're kind of like, I like this. You can, you know, probably ditch that. Um, one of the things that I definitely saw that people liked in my newsletter is because I do little drawings, right? And so they were like, we like the little drawings and we like that you only share certain drawings with us and not with everybody else. So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, a few people came back and said, hey, you were talking about these products in there and I actually like that you did that and I actually checked it out myself. And unfortunately, I don't get paid for recommending or suggesting those products, but I do like to find really awesome things and just share it with people. Now, that may not be your, you know, your audience's tempo and that's totally fine, but that's reaching out and kind of finding out what they like is going to be really meaningful for you because that is an informative engagement and you are listening to their feedback and this is what's just going to make your newsletter better. Now, speaking of engagement, it is important that you do have some form of engagement in your newsletter and it doesn't have to be things that your reader needs to respond to but it does need to be something that makes them think like or maybe they'll nod or have a thought um, so kind of sprinkle those in wherever it's appropriate it's just it's just good in general now you may be at this point kind of figuring out like okay I, I guess I know what to put in there but how do I get people to sign up you get people to sign up by telling them that you have a newsletter there's various social media platforms that you can reach out to obviously there's YouTube hey I have a newsletter um, and you can have them sign up on Twitter Instagram if you just let people know it's there uh, then that will make it easier for them to follow also telling them that you have like new news that's coming up very soon will you know make them curious and they'll sign up for the newsletter then you can also do a couple of other things um, there's a carrot right you give a carrot to have people sign up for your newsletter this is often in the form of free content that you provide it can be a short story an informational something but it has to be something that they can't get on any of your other platforms another thing that you can do and it's technically considered a bribe almost um, you can do giveaways where people who sign up for your newsletter will actually you know be entered into a giveaway and they have the chance to win prizes this isn't like bad but the one thing I do want to mention is that if you do this giveaway in the giveaway needs to come from you you shouldn't be doing it in a affiliation with somebody else um, or basically make it like a huge group thing because what you if you end up doing like some kind of giveaway that's affiliated with another group or you know a whole collection of authors what you're gonna get is an influx of people who just want the giveaway and they don't really care that much about you so you'll see a huge like subscriber rate go up but then once the giveaway is over they're gonna unsubscribe and none of those people were interested in you in the beginning so when you do the giveaway again it needs to come from you and it can't be basically part of a huge thing that's going on now in this video I have not talked about the mechanics of setting up your newsletter where to go I haven't talked about you know when to purge your list I'm, I'm not doing any of that this is basically just kind of like this is what you need to do with your newsletter and the whole reason I'm not doing the mechanics thing is because there's honestly people who can explain that a lot better. There is a class on Skillshare by MailChimp where they basically talk about how to set up the newsletter. They talk about how to do segments, how to purge the list. They talk about all that stuff. And that's definitely, if there's anything on Skillshare, I would recommend it's that class. Now, at the same time, if you are not interested in Skillshare or you do not want to go to Skillshare, there's this book right here. Um, this was recommended to me by a group of lady authors that I do live stream with. And it is a really good book. And as you can see, it is not very thick, but it covers everything from the basic 
basics of how to set up and use you know somebody to send out the newsletter to different forms of engagement really good book can't recommend it more now earlier in the video i asked about your thoughts if you like long or short newsletters and i kind of asked you to explain why the other thing i think would be really beneficial for the group on a whole is to talk about the kind of things that you would like to see in a newsletter just so that way who people who are about to do their own newsletter can kind of get like a gauge of you know what things are interesting for potential readers now if you haven't signed up for my newsletter yet you still can i got a link down below where you can do that you get signed up you get the chance to win potential prizes not to mention you get access to a short story that i did and you can kind of read it and see if my writing style is definitely up your alley if you happen to like the content of this video uh please feel free to subscribe if you would like to know when i post the videos hit the notification bell as of the month of april i am coming out with videos three times a week on monday wednesday friday and then after that i'm going back to once a week because i want to have this thing called sleep but that is all i've got for you today and i hope you guys have a great weekend